Can we talk about Iowa for a minute? Sure. I love to talk about Iowa. Good. Well, my mom's people are from Wayne County. Oh, okay. So, But now you're from the eastern part of the state, right? Yeah, I'm from the southeastern tip, from what I like to call the Fertile Crescent, where it's uh, the Des Moines River and the Mississippi River kind of come down and, and make this triangle. And, and um, it's that black glacial dirt that got mm-hmm. shoved down there millions of years ago. And, oh, man, it just grows the best crops and just that black dirt. You know, you just almost want to eat it, you know. <laughs> Hopefully it won't come to that, but I, I know we have moments where yeah. we fear. Well, yeah, well, like in Haiti, you know, where they're making dirt sandwiches without the bread, man. <laughs> Mud pies, I believe we called them. Yeah, children. yeah. How do you feel that growing up in, in that part of the country has influenced what you do artistically? Um, that's that's a that's a good question. I, um, I've always been interested in how a person's environment can shape what they do, uh, either artistically or otherwise, and... and um, and some of my favorite artists uh, and musicians, uh, you know, they, they write and sing about where they're from and, and what they know. And, and um, so, for, so for me, it's Iowa, and I, I live on a farm there. In fact, I live on the same farm I grew up on and uh, in the woods. And so I grew up playing music. Uh, at, um, it was pretty geographically isolated, and I never had anyone else to play with, really. And so I kind of developed a style of playing by myself and, and trying to... Um, make as much noise as I could by myself and and because uh, I, I didn't have anyone else to to accompany me and so I you know do a lot of stomping and and uh, could never afford to pay a drummer anyway and so so it, it kind of developed a one-man band style of playing and as far as writing uh, uh, I definitely like to write about um, the land the farm the metaphors of um, you know planting seeds in the spring and harvesting in the fall and and um, how that equates to the the birth and death cycles of every living thing and and everything that's born must die and you kind of learn those lessons early on on the farm you know when it's when it's time to slaughter the chickens and and uh, you realize that that's just how this whole world goes around and and we're going to get slaughtered here one day and and this is why we don't name the livestock exactly you don't want to name you don't want to name the livestock that's funny um that's true and so um so those definitely uh, shaped the kind of themes I like to approach in, in writing. And, and um, yeah, like I said, I've always, like, I'm, I'm kind of a hip-hop junkie, too, for the language aspect of it. And I like those guys like, um, you know, Talib Kweli and, and Most Def, that they're always, you know, Brooklyn stand-up. You know, I, uh, they're rapping about the BK, and, and uh, I just, I really dig that. And that they're um, they're rapping about what they know. And, and uh, so, I, yeah, I try to, you know... Um, sing about what I know, and that's the farm in Iowa. I, I invite you to, to travel, you know, the world and, and write about Paris someday, but it, it might seem a little disingenuous if oh, you did I, it right out of the bat. Oh, that's cool. I really like Paris, actually. I, I played a show there, actually, with Mark Lanigan. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, who's one of my favorites and, and um, just a, a really interesting man and, and, and a, a really, really, really good guy. Um, and, yeah, I played a show there with him. And uh, I, I really enjoyed myself, and uh, I, I dig Paris. I've had the good fortune of doing a lot of traveling over in Europe, and and um, so it's interesting to see how really we're just all the same, you know. Like if I'm if I'm sitting in a bar in Italy or in Dublin or in uh, Krakow, Poland, um, the citizens are just in there and they're discussing the world, and and you know it, it made me realize that we're all kind of the same. And a lot of times it's the people up top you know the people up in power that, that tend to kind of screw things up and mm-hmm. and when I was traveling over there a lot it was I was a little bit ashamed to be American you know and I hate that feeling of you know the last eight years how it just I was I was trying to be an ambassador of goodwill and say hey you know really most of us are pretty cool you know we didn't even vote that guy in he cheated his way in anyway and and but they know <laughs> all they know that you know and um so I was always greeted really well but um yeah it was a good chance to be like an ambassador you know but yeah, so I think those themes kind of um, uh, eke their way in, too, when I, when I do a lot of traveling. But. Well, before we send you on your merry way, can we hear another song? Sure. <gasps> Yay! Gonna... Are you going to play banjo? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to switch over to the banjo here. This is kind of my first love. It's kind of tricky here. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> um, both my grandfathers played the banjo, and so this, this is kind of my, my first love. <laughs> Something about it always kind of spoke to me. Um, but um, speaking of the farm and, uh, and, and touring, this song is, is kind of about that. and it's, it's called Lifetime Underground. 
and uh, it's about just um, doing a lot of touring, but but uh, always kind of having a little piece of home in my heart, and so I'm gonna try this here. William Elliott Whitmore, thank you so much for joining us here on KEXP. Thank you for having me. It was a real honor. It was a pleasure all around. You've got it tuned to KEXP, where the music matters. <laughs> 